With their independence firmly established, the Founding Fathers found themselves with an expanding nation in need of governing, a nation that was still full of unrest. It was a nation in need of strong leadership as it expanded westward, led by dynamic forces. But in that expansion, and in the formation of a new nation, the seeds of the next crisis in America were being sown. When the Constitution left Philadelphia, the country was almost evenly split between the Federalists, who favored a strong central government as promised in the Constitution, and those who favored states' rights, and who by default were called the Anti-Federalists. The Anti-Federalists consisted of staunch patriots such as Patrick Henry, the governor of Virginia, and George Clinton, the longtime governor of New York, the words of Thomas Paine perhaps best summed up their disdain for the Constitution when he wrote, Government, even in its best state, is but a necessary evil. While these are the names of great men in American history, it's easy to forget that they were all too human and could not always separate themselves from personal prejudices. The Census Act was passed in 1790, to determine how many delegates each state would have in the House of Representatives. The results of the first census in August 1790 hold some interesting facts. The population of the U.S. was about 3.9 million, which included nearly 700,000 black slaves and nearly 60,000 free blacks. Massachusetts reported no slaves. The largest city was Philadelphia, with a population of 42,000. The runner-up was New York, with 33,000. Virginia, with more than 820,000 people, was the most populous state, and nearly half of the population of the U.S. lived in the southern states. And nearly half of every 1,000 whites was under the age of 16. <laughs> 